this is part three of your review video, hopefully the last part. Um, number 10, a rectangular prism has a surface area of 148 inches squared. The length is 5 inches and the width is 4 inches. What is the height? Okay, we're going to start with our formula for rectangular prism. So surface area equals 2 times length times width plus 2 times height times length plus 2 times width times height. Okay, it tells us the width. Oh, sorry, that's the length. It tells us the length is 5 and the width is 4. So anytime we see an L, I'm going to put a 5 there. And anytime I see a W for width, I'm going to put a 4 there. Okay, and everything else can come down. Um, including the h for the variable. Okay, we don't know what the height is. That's what we're trying to solve for. We do, however, know what the surface area is. So we're going to write 148 equals, and I'll put units on at the end. Um, the height is just a length, so it'll just be plain old units, so I won't worry about them in my calculations. Okay, so all I did was substitute in my numbers. 148 went there. 5 went in for length, and 4 went in for width. Okay, now I'm going to start doing some math. Um, so I'm going to simplify anything that I can. So 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 times 4 is 40. Okay, plus 2 times 5 is 10, so that's 10 times h, plus 2 times 4 is 8, so that's 8 times h, and then we're going to bring down 148. Okay, let's keep going. So we can combine 10 h's with 8 h's to get 18 h's. Bring everything else down. And now we're just going to solve a two-step equation. So subtract 40 from each side. Okay, here's your zero pairs. So get 108 equals 18h. Okay, now we need to divide both sides by 18. Okay, so we can work out 108 divided by 18. Okay, so that's going to go in six times exactly. Okay, so that tells us that 6 equals h. And I said we were going to put units back on it, and that would be 6 inches. Okay, so final answer. The height is 6 inches. All right, number 11, a rectangular prism has a volume of 960 centimeters cubed. The width is 8, and the height is 12. What is the length? Okay, this time we're going to start with volume equals area of the base times the height of the prism. Okay, volume is 960, so we're going to substitute that amount. Um, the base in a rectangular prism is length times width. Okay, so length times width times height, we can substitute in 8 centimeters for width and 12 centimeters for height. So the only thing we don't know is the length. All right, let's simplify what we can. So 8 times 12 gives us 96. So we have length times 96 equals 960. Okay, so the opposite of multiplying by 96, or the inverse, is to divide by 96. Okay, so length equals 10, and this time it is in centimeters. Okay, so the length is 10 centimeters. Okay, number 12. A circle has an area of 254.34 square meters. What is the radius? Okay, circle area, our formula is pi 
times radius squared. Okay, we know the circle area is 254.34, so we're going to substitute that in. We know the value of pi is 3.14, and we are looking for the radius, so that stays R. Okay, this time we're going to divide by 3.14 is our first step. Okay, so 254.34 divided by 3.14. So remember, anytime we're dividing by a decimal, we want to move our decimal over until we get a whole number. So really, we're doing 25,434 divided by 314. Okay, and when we do that, um, 314 goes into 2,543 eight times. So I'm going to put the eight above the three. Okay, eight times 314 is 2,512. Okay, so we subtract and bring down the four. And 314 goes into 314 one time. All right, so now we have 81 equals r squared. Now we're not done yet. Remember r squared means r times r. So what we need to figure out is what number times itself is 81 or what's the square root of 81. Okay, And the answer to that is 9. So the radius is 9 meters. All right, next, number 13, a circle has a circumference of 56.62 miles. What is the radius of the circle? Okay, circumference formula, we can either use pi times diameter or 2 pi r. Because it's asking about the radius, let's use 2 pi r, or 2 times pi times radius. Okay, the circumference is 56.62, so I'm going to substitute that in. Okay, pi is 3.14, and radius is just going to stay radius. Okay, this time let's combine 2 times 3.14 first to get 6.28. So we get 6.28 times r equals 56.62. Okay, the inverse of multiplying is dividing. So we're going to divide by 6.28 on each side. Okay, and we can set that up. Um, just like before, we're going to move our decimal over. So we have 56.62 divided by 6.28. So we're going to move it over twice in each number. And we're going to rewrite this as 5,662 divided by 628. Okay, so this goes in 9 times. So 9 times 628 is going to give us 5,652. And we get a decimal, so we can bring that down. Um, and it will keep going. There will be some other digits, but we can round, and we can say that the radius is about 9 miles. Okay, and that'll happen when we're dealing with pi because 3.14 is a rounded number. Um, so our answer will be pretty close, but yeah, that number will continue. Okay, final problem. Um, we have a diagram of a running track, and it's made up of two straights and two semicircles. The radius of each semicircle is 25 meters. So I'm going to label 
from here to the edge is 25 meters. The length of the outer perimeter of the entire running track is 500 meters. So all the way around, that distance equals 500 meters. Find the length of one of the straight sections. Okay, so we're trying to find either that side or that side. So we're going to label those X. Okay, so the whole perimeter is 500 meters. Let's look at the pieces that make up that perimeter. Okay, first we have these two circular pieces. And we, when we put the two half circles together or the two semicircles together, we get one full circle. So circumference of the blue part is 2 times pi times radius. Okay, the perimeter of the entire thing is the circumference, the 2 pi r, plus this side and this side. So plus x plus x. So if we add the two half circles with the two straight pieces, we get the total perimeter. Okay, but we know what the perimeter is. We know the whole thing is 500 meters. So I'm going to replace p with 500. Okay, 2 pi r plus x plus x. Okay, I can also combine some other things. Um, x plus x is 2x. So now I have 500 equals 2 pi r plus 2x. Okay, I also know the value for pi, and I also know the radius. So we're going to substitute those values in. So 2 times 3.14 times... 25, okay, that's my 2 pi r, plus 2 times x, all together has to equal 500. Okay, now I know that equation's getting a little bit big, but we can handle it. Okay, so now we're going to start multiplying all of this. So 2 times 3.14 is 6.28. So we're going to multiply that by the radius. Okay, so we should get 157. So that actually worked out. It came out to a nice whole number. Okay, so 157 plus 2x equals 500. And we can do it from here. Um, we're going to subtract 157 from each side. Okay, here's your zero pair. Okay, so we get 343 equals 2x. Final step, divide by 2 on each side. Okay, if you need to, 343 divided by 2. Okay, 2 goes into 3 one time. One left over, so we're going to add a decimal. And 2 goes into 10 five times. Okay, so we get that x equals 171 and a half. Um, so this is the distance along the straight, so that is in meters. Okay, so we can go back up to the picture and label 171.5 meters, 171.5 meters, um, and all of those pieces added up together. Okay, so the 157 is the blue part. So together, that piece and that piece combined are 157. If you add all three of those up, you should get back to 500. So that's a way that you can check to make sure that your answer is reasonable. All right, again, uh, make sure that your study guide is completely correct and use this to study for your big test coming up. Good luck.